Welcome back to Stasis. We've thankfully just left that horrible place with all those vats and half-finished clones. Just come through this trapdoor here, and I think we're maybe back up to the level that we broke through with the tram when it got derailed. Hopefully we're on the same level that we're supposed to be, so we can actually make our way to where we're supposed to be. But uh, yeah, let's look around and figure out where we are and where we need to go. And try to reestablish contact with Taya. Or Tia? However you say her name. The trams grip the tracks greedily with their many legs. <laughs> I love that description. Gripping the track greedily with their many legs, it makes it sound like an insect, like it's a. like a millipede or something. Wrapping its legs around the track. The magnetic stoppers on the tram's guide rails look sturdier than many other parts of this aging vessel. Rarely trafficked areas breed unconventional forms of life. Here, the graffiti tagger has covered the tram station with a wild variety of tribal markings. That's like 20 layers of graffiti. I don't, I don't even know when one piece of graffiti ends and the other begins. boarded up entrance indicate that the trams have been out of service for some time. Yeah, this looks long abandoned. I don't suppose I can drill my way through. This isn't gonna work. Eh, it was worth a shot. Alright, can't go that way, so let's go this way. I'm in a tram station. Uh... I just saw something, someone, moving, and the sound of a kid laughing. Although what I saw was definitely not a kid. Hmm... No! Fuck me! Fuck you! God, rarely do jump scares get me, but Jesus. I really was not expecting that. Alright, let's let's go. <sighs> the tower. I am pressurizing the raw materials containment tag. Yeah, come in. John, thank goodness, I can hear you. He just disappeared. No radio, no PDT. Who the hell was that? Dr. Herodis Milan. Has a special project. He knew you. It's a big ship. And, um, I'm in a different division to him entirely. I only met him once. A real arsehole. I just want to get my family out of this goddamn place. That's the plan. That's true. I'm afraid it doesn't work like that, John. Like hell it doesn't. If I'm tagged, then so are they. Except... I can only access your tag because the dot make scanners registered you. Oh. I've scanned for your family and I can't pick them up. I mean, are they on the ship? Have they been rescued? It only means their PDTs haven't been activated. But I still have an idea that might just work. So I guess the tag is probably what happens when that surgery robot does the spinal tagging. So I guess it's in my spine. Ugh. Having your spine tag can't feel good. You should be close to an infirmary where the DNA sequencer. If you get your blood into the sequencer, I can scan the ship for familial DNA. And then we can find your daughter. Then 
We can use her DNA to find Ellen. Exactly. Notice. Reserve power facilities are online. Backup systems are now enabled and functioning at benchmark levels. The outside temperature is minus 200... Use it to find Ellen. Wait a minute, who's Ellen? I thought it was like Rebecca and Becca. Rebecca is wife and then Re uh, Becca the daughter. Okay, you know, I don't know the names of his family, so forget it. Wife and daughter is what I'm going to call them. John, wife, and daughter. I don't remember what their names are. The scaffolding forms a protective shell around assorted machinery, rising toward a high ceiling. Maze-like shadows are cast onto the walls and ground. Alright, so I guess I am going to have to take my own blood. Pretty soon, unfortunately. But uh, let's not take it now, I don't want that bloody syringe hanging around my inventory. You. The static dances across the screen to the tune of hissing. Mm, crew or security? Let's go to security. Maybe there's a gun or something that I can use. Oh, a couple bodies. Lots of things to look at. A crumpled body rests against the slanted bulkhead in a leisurely repose. The uniform indicates that it's a security officer. I cut his wrists. He killed himself. He'd rather kill himself than, I guess, wait and have one of the things get him. It's probably a better end. Hmm. This last entry here doesn't even have a name. That's not good. Probably written in haste, then. This whole shift change thing is kind of strange. Putting Ronald in security when he's obviously not equipped strikes me as irresponsible. Oh well, I'm sure I can compensate. A notice went out telling us to follow the new security guidelines this evening. I wonder what happened. It's only a few extra doors to lock, as far as I'm concerned. Easy enough. Food supplies are stalled and people are getting nervous. Someone's been distilling alcohol despite the fact that express authorization is required to even possess it. Ivan was describing the concept of moonshine to Ronald, and the guy asked how moonshine could exist if we're in a spaceship so far away from the moon. I swear to god, if aliens board the ship and pick us off one by one or something, I want to see Ronald go first. I really want to do something about this alcohol situation. It's my duty to ensure that the Groom Lake's crew is secure, and that important research isn't interfered with. At least I'd like to believe so. These clowns don't share the sentiment. The ass end of the ship just started exploding and jilted everything that wasn't bolted down. There's a goddamn pen stuck in the wall next to me. I can only imagine all the people injured right now, but can't leave on account of the lockdown. Lockdown or not, Station B is fucked, so getting to medical isn't happening. Someone suggested that we could use the specimen transport track, but that's shady as all hell. There's no leaving the security center now. Staring at Ronald's lifeless body is a fucking superior alternative to being ripped apart by whatever's outside. I hear screams. They're distant and muffled. Silence. 24 hours of silence. Not a scream, not a footstep. Still not a word from Ivan. The guy looked away from the atmosphere control room just before Ronald pulled the plug. I got bored and read Ronald's file. He had a lot of stuff running really deep. Maybe he wasn't ignorant after all. That's it for the water. Ivan refused to drink anything but moonshine. I tried my best to get him to have water. A stubborn bastard wouldn't hear it. He hasn't moved in a while. That's it. That's the last entry. Hmm. That's strange. Didn't mention anything about being suicidal. No suicide note. That's really weird. The 
The security guard seems to have died while sitting in this cushioned recliner. It tilts back at an angle that will hold the body for a long, long time. This new guy, Anderson, is really something. Five minutes in the uh, five minutes in the door, and he's already asking what all the computers do. I like it. He's inquisitive, just like my boy back home. I'm glad he got put here in the shift change, but I'm disappointed that neither of these two are ladies. I could use some female company. Okay, maybe Anderson is a little more confused than inquisitive, but his heart is in the right place. I can respect that. But Sarge? How in the hell did the boy get Sarge from Serato? Paul is just plain obnoxious. How the hell did the boy get Sarge from Serato? I have no idea what that means. Oh, wait. Sarge from Serato? That's the person's last name. Oh, so Anderson started calling him? Sarge? Or something? Well, anyway. Food's not coming for a while. Fortunately, somebody's been making moonshine. It's not the white oak whiskey from back home, but you don't come across much liquor in space. Looks like I'll be moderating the supply, so to speak. Hodgson just tried to arrest someone. Prick. Rations are in. Good thing, too. The liquor wasn't keeping the crew at bay like it used to. This entire ship smells like shit. It's always been bad, but it gets worse every day. It's even a different type of shit every once in a while. Beyond me. Groom Lake is on lockdown. Tremors, power outages, and several injured. Some guys left three days ago to repair a tram station. Haven't heard from them since. I can only fear the worst. And I don't want to wait to figure out what's been going on around here. Paul and I have agreed on a solution, but Anderson isn't grasping it. I don't expect him to. <laughs> I knew Anderson would have trouble coping. I knew he wouldn't understand. At least he went at least he went easier than we will. Wait. Would have trouble coping. I knew he wouldn't understand. At least he went easier than we will. We're talking about Anderson killing himself? Yeah, they must be. He saw so much in his short life. There just wasn't room for more. He'll never have a funeral. Nobody back home is going to think of him and wonder what happened. I think Paul and I are the only people on this ship who knew him by name. Maybe that Samantha girl he was talking about still remembers him. Her dog could be named after him. Or maybe he picked her a flower and she tucked it into a book. I never did read much, but right now, I'd love to be holding a book. Poe would work. He's the only author I know by name. I haven't talked to Paul. He thinks I'm drinking, but I'm too preoccupied with Anderson for that. I figure I'm writing this for a reason. What if nobody ever reads it? What if this ship just drifts to the edge of the universe, dead and empty? If you exist, if you somehow stumble upon this, remember Anderson for me. He reminds me so much of how my son used to be. If you don't do it, nobody will. I don't beg. I never beg, but if you're a decent human, you'll know why you have to. Remember Anderson. Barely awake, typing is an effort. Moonshine is not water. Hodgson had last word. Remember Anderson. Wait a minute, he said something.
This. Maybe that Samantha girl he was talking about still remembers him. Am I crazy, or was Samantha the name of the... Uh, the name they gave to the fish thing in the growing vats? Is that the... the girl he was talking about? Samantha? I hope not. I don't... I'm pretty sure that was its name, though. Oh god. So this was Anderson, right? No, this is Hodgson. So, wait a minute. Where is Anderson? Well, that's Hodgson, and that's... Ivan. Where's Anderson? Hmm. This bank of monitors was designed to display the view from various security cameras around the facility. Okay, I can actually see something. Alright, what have we got? Skull and crossbones, and I see lots of, like, gas, so I'm guessing there's some sort of a leak there. Uh, I see some flashing warning lights, too, so yeah, that's a bad place to be. Hmm, what does that say? Looks like... What is that? Are those leisure tables? Mess hall? I can't quite tell what I'm looking at, and I can't read that. And what about up here? Security camera annex. Hmm, I don't know where that is either. Oh wait, no, that's this room, isn't it? That's Marichek, right there. Wait. That can't be this room. That's a circular room. What? J. Marichek? Oh, whoops. Yeah, what? That security camera shows me, but that's some circular room with a thing in the center and trees and that. That is not this room. Is that from the past? Is it looping old footage? Or is that the ghost I saw? Or something, I don't know. Anyway. Atmosphere control access. Activate motion detector. Hmm. I'll need to figure something out here. Okay, so it's a puzzle. A motion detection device has been installed above the door. <clears throat> so what, does it like... And does it need to detect a motion to open? To hmm. So is this meant to be like a two-person system where, you know, whoever's on duty, like, activates it and then the motion detector scans to make sure someone's actually there? If that is the case, then that's kind of overcomplicated. You might as well just make it so the person by the door has to press a button, rather than have a motion detector. But, uh, anyway. Let's check out the logs. Alcohol is being manufactured and distributed aboard the Groom Lake. Security has opted to take an approach of non-intervention, as its effects on morale will likely prevent theft and potential riots associated with the limited rations. However, Security will regularly confiscate quantities of alcohol to moderate the supply. <laughs> That's what he meant by moderating the supply. Taking it and drinking it for yourself. Rations have arrived and been distributed. A very few reported or evidential cases of theft. This can likely be attributed to the morale increase speculated as a result of the distribution of alcohol. Specimen Samantha received. Yeah, that was Samantha, okay. <laughs> Samantha's not a person. Uh, received for transport to Laboratory 18. This specimen, from the cloning vats, is contained in an iron lung. Transport needs to be arranged quickly. Specimen is scraping against the inside of the containment unit. Also, by the way, I just realized that the background here, this computer screen and the keyboard, is completely coated in blood. 
Hmm. That was December 6th, right? Yeah. Tremors have struck the Groom Lake. Power outages and several injuries have been reported. Lockdown is in effect. Four crew members have been reported missing. While attempting while attempting to restore a tram station to working order. To prevent further loss or injury, the corridor has been sealed and flooded with highly corrosive gas. That must be what the security cam up here is showing. That's got to be the highly corrosive gas or something. Okay, so it looks like the whole thing started like the... When everything really, really went to shit, it looks like it started with, with tremors, like with an explosion, at the ass end of the ship, apparently. The back of the Groom Lake. So what exploded? What exactly happened? I mean, we know the cloning vats were going and horrible things were spawning out of them. But... Where, um, like, where are the cloning vats located? Was it an explosion from there? Is that in the ass end of the ship? Is it related to that, or, or what? Or maybe it's just because of poor maintenance. Because engineers have told me, you know, they've, they've said in their, in their notes and stuff that this ship was badly in need of repairs. So maybe it just exploded from poor maintenance and that allowed the specimens to get out. And that's when things went wrong. I bet that's it, actually. Just fucking open! <laughs> John's a little bit frustrated. Uh, I would be too, though. Fair enough, John. Okay, so what can I do here? I need something to make motion, I guess. Uh, I don't think I have anything right now. Let's go to the other door. I probably need something from the crew, crew commons. Once we know where Becca is, how can I get to her? There is another tram through the crew quarters. Once we know where you're going, we'll move forward from there. More trams. God forgive us. Let's hope the next tram doesn't get derailed by the evil scientist. I think he's a doctor, not a scientist, but whatever. I'm going to call him an evil scientist, because he's totally an evil scientist. Mountain images. A long landscape of a serene mountainscape intended to provide a sense of calm and perspective. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm feeling real calm right now. Thank you, mountain images. Does that on the ground say... Smile? What possible reason could I have to smile? Although it's actually pointing over here saying smile, so maybe there's like a camera or something? Like smile for the camera. Oh, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> this freaking point-and-click adventure horror game is more scary than most 3D horror games. A body lies slumped against the entrance bulkhead. With his head hanging forward, it's almost possible to imagine him having a nap during a long shift. That goes to the medical laboratory. Frosted glass door. Oh, this is glass? This especially large frosted glass door is coated with the dirt of neglect. There's another door here. I don't see an access panel. It must be the secondary containment. Give me some time, and I'll see what I can do. It's flashing. It's like flashing between locked and unlocked. <sighs> Didn't think that would work. I wish I could do something. Something. Oh god, written blood on here. Help me. 
Dr. Rick Graham. Okay, actually, before I read this, I've been coerced using foul sorcery into saying this. Omni is the bestest and draws my beard in an incredibly realistic manner. And I'm not allowed to give anybody context on what the heck that means, so good luck, I'm so sorry. Anyway, back to your regularly scheduled reading of this bloodstained PDA. I'm getting sick of this bumps and scrapes bullshit. I didn't get this degree just so that I could stitch idiots up when they accidentally stab themselves with a pen. I want to do fun experiments. Is that too much to ask? It's not like I want to be a mad scientist and sew new arms onto people or anything. Uh, although, human spiders would be cool. <laughs> human spiders would be cool. Uh, this person belongs in doom. It's not like I want to be a mad scientist. <laughs> it's a miracle. Security somehow ended up passing a container from one of the cloning vats onto me. It's labeled Samantha. They understand it's to be transferred to Lab 18, right? Oh well, no reason I can't observe it for a while, right? I'll have my loyal assistant, Miriam, make up some good excuses for me. This creature is marvelous. The notes included don't say much, but I'm pretty sure that she didn't have a fully formed spine when they packaged this girl up. It describes her as just being a tail. There are some other bones as well, but I didn't major in monster anatomy. I wish I had, though. You can't make this shit up. This fucker grew eyes. I mean it. She did not have these the last time I checked. They're rudimentary, sure, but they just grew. They follow me around. At this point, I'm going to take credit for Samantha entirely. I mean... They can't prove that there was anything more than some stem cells in that container the last they saw it, right? From now on, Samantha is mine. I can't wait to see what she turns into. Wait, I'm sorry, did this person say they weren't a mad scientist? This sounds kind of mad scientist-y. Lab 18 is definitely getting suspicious and impatient. I'm running out of excuses for why I haven't transferred Samantha yet. I need Miriam to stall a bit longer. I read her PDA, so I know she wants to turn me in. She wants my job. Fortunately, I have video of her screwing the guys from the lab. All of them. So there's my job security. Uh, what? All, all of? She slept with all of them? What? She slept with all of them in a place where there were video cameras? I don't know if he's just making that up, or if he means that literally, in which case, huh? That seems really unlikely. Oh, shit. Which one? This one? No. There we go. This just got serious. The tremors knocked me over the counter, and I twisted a muscle in my knee. It's going to be a long lockdown spent bandaging people up without any access to the full medical wing. Samantha isn't mine anymore. Some other poor fool can take responsibility for this one. What a nice guy. I heard shrill screams coming from the entertainment area. The first and last time I performed surgery, the patient woke up and started screaming her head off. Something about seeing your own exposed ribs really bothers people. Anyway, these screams were like that. Only more intense. They're the screams of the dying. I've locked the emergency bulkhead. No sign of Miriam. And that's it. What was that sound? It sounded like something unlocking. That wasn't this, was it? we uh, have some light? There we go. What is that thing? Is that like some sort of a breathing unit? Something growing inside of it? 
Oh, it's an iron lung. Oh, that's the thing that Samantha was kept inside of, right? The cylindrical hyperbaric chamber is welded shut, creating a metal tomb for anyone inside. <laughs> can I open it? Looks like maybe I can open it or something. I can do something with this. That's just a viewing portal, though. I don't think you can open the viewing portal. I'm not sure what it was That would be Samantha. <laughs> Can we look again? <laughs> My imagination's playing tricks on me. <sighs> I don't think your imagination is playing tricks on you. Oh, here's the DNA scanner. This device appears to analyze the DNA of samples placed on its receiving tray. Alright, let's do that last. I don't want to take a blood sample just yet. Because, you gross. Another frosted glass window. Ah, this is from Miriam. Dr. Graham is up to no good. This weird pod accidentally arrived at our medical bay. It holds the most terrifying creature I've ever seen in my entire life. And he says it's beautiful. He wants me to find excuses for why it isn't being transferred to Lab 18. Good thing the guys there like me. I'll help him keep it a secret for now. Although I might get his job if I could get him kicked off the Groom Lake. I'll keep an eye on what he's up to. Interesting. This thing is growing all sorts of body parts at ungodly rates. The notes say it was just a tail and some flesh at some point, but I don't even see the tail anymore. What kind of fucked up experiments are we doing? <laughs> Fuck. I'm locked out of the medical bay. And Dr. Graham has locked himself in there with that thing. We need to help these injured people. Insufferable prick. They want to use the specimen transport track to get the injured crew members to the medical wing. Even if the ship wasn't falling apart, that's a terrible idea. It's funny to see everyone frantically typing away on their PDAs. Who's gonna read it? The surface of whatever planet's gravitational pull the lifeless groom lake gets sucked into doesn't care about your damn feelings. Okay, DNA scanner. I think this is it. Excellent. You need to get your blood sample onto the receiving tray. And uh, I'll do the rest. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Just don't think about it, don't think about it, don't think about it. It's not red, that's not blood, that's just Kool-Aid. Okay, it's working. Receiving the genetic info. This is good, John. This is excellent. I saw something. Um, I feel like I should save the game. Like, I, I feel like I might just be about to die. Let's save. It was... it was an animal. 
The upload finished. I'm going to start the scan now. Tia, what's going on here? I've heard things, but I don't know any specifics. You have to believe me. Maybe it's one of those fucking things that ate Yuri. I grow plants. I don't care for man's pets. Just... Just let me know when the scan's finished. Secondary containment is now accessible. Head through to the other tram station. Warning. Serotonin levels are abnormal. Okay, this is what the security footage was showing. The one that showed me in a circular room with some trees and stuff. Yeah, this was... this is what it was showing. But I've never been here. Why? How, how could it show me? I don't get it. The constant flickering of its lights does not add to your confidence in this elevator. No power to the elevator. Alright, so there's three ways to go, but two of them are locked. Tram station. Entertainment. And... Where the heck is that? Sleep block something? Locked due to atmosphere control override. Hmm. Oh, is that the one that's been flooded with a poisonous gas? Maybe that is. Hmm. Alright, well, it looks like we have to go this way. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 go back. There's some monitors here. Hmm, blank stare. Looks like there's nothing on them. Nope. Scratch marks. Something was trying to get in. There's certainly a lot of noise coming from behind the door. I guess all that stuff's just left on. This is disturbingly dark. Okay, two places to go. Let's go to the first one. Oh my god. This place has gone full fucking Von Braun. It's like all the growths in System Shock 2 taking over the ship. Jesus. At the thickest sections of tangled growth, bulbous knots form a shape eerily close to that of a human body. As you listen, you can hear the rasp of labored breathing. <laughs> the sleeping cot has been wrenched away from the wall, either by the damage done to the floor or the power of the root growths themselves. Flaps of industrial grating have been pushed upward from below, rumpled like a discarded memo. The guts of the level below lie exposed. Oh, that's what I'm seeing. This is a hole. The root-like growths have become affixed to the wall here in a clustered braid. Isabella Spalding. Also, is that a code of some sort? Zero, one, two, three, five, eight. Man, this PDA is just caked in so much. Blood and... I think that's blood, and then fingerprints and who knows what else. Oh yeah, that's definitely blood. <sighs> Another 
a long day in hydroponics. I planted carrots today. This place seriously sucks. But I figured the longer I work for Cane Corp, the sooner they'll be able to replace this defective uterus of mine. Oh, okay, yeah, so she was waiting for a replacement organ. Harry is protective, and not in a cute way. It makes me feel a little uncomfortable. His attempts to protect my honor, his words, whenever Grant even looks at me are unnervingly familiar, just like my ex-husband used to do. I'm not ready for another round of that bullshit. Half of the ship has been on lockdown for two long weeks. Apparently some new scientists boarded today, so maybe they'll be able to restore to resolve the issue. But what do I know? I make vegetables reproduce for a living. I have to admit, Harry's whole stalker thing can be great sometimes. He's growing herbs for me so that I can make tea. With all this new security bullshit, I wouldn't dare use company resources personally like that. I've been pretending to like Grant just a little bit. I don't, but it keeps Harry on his toes. That sounds like a really disturbing situation. Keeping your... stalker... on their toes and trying to, like, manage them... to use them for something good, that's, that's a dangerous game to play. Harry opted to stay on the Groom Lake for another round. He was eligible to leave at the shift change, but he chose to stay. Gee, I wonder why he'd do that. He's a grown man, for goodness sake, but he's acting like a lovesick teen. He needs to stop fucking calling me Belle, though. It's Isabella, like the Queen of Spain. I keep hearing chatter about a fungal growth spreading all over the Groom Lake. Let's hope it doesn't get here to hydroponics. I'd be devastated if anything happened to my precious celery. Not the celery. Spoke way too soon. I came into Hydra today to find everything coated in this strange fungus. Harry actually had a pretty good idea. What if we fought the fungus with genetically enhanced super mushrooms? Nope. Crossbreeding mushrooms did not improve things. Hopefully the emergency rations will get here soon. Unless people want to eat the portobellos from hell, that is. This shit is about to get dangerous. People have been beaten up. Some are even dead. We've seen a lockdown before, but it wasn't a mass panic like this. Will it be over soon? Or ever? Harry told me to stay in the sleeping block because it could be dangerous outside. You know, I've taken care of myself for 28 years without help from Harry. I think I can handle myself. I'm not going to spend the final days of my life playing the helpless female. And I'm not going to cling to Harry, even if he's the last human being I'll ever see. He can't expect anything from me. Well, I hope you got out, Isabella. Although, I'm thinking pretty much nobody did, so... <laughs> she probably didn't but we can hope. I don't see a body, so you never know. Also, I wonder if this fungal, this so-called fungal growth, has anyone studied it? Has anyone actually studied this this growth? Because I wonder if it's related to the, the, the cloning vats. Like, maybe it's some sort of, I don't even know if this is possible, but some sort of like, you know, Cloning vat fun fungus. I mean, <laughs> I mean, fungus doesn't really have anything to do with cloning vats, I think. <laughs> but I mean, I'm just imagining this fungus growth must be related to the clones or something, right? It must be, right? It's got to be related to them somehow. Shelby. I couldn't even be bothered to get out of bed today. Nobody came asking questions, though, so that works. Sometimes, when I first wake up, I wait as long as possible to say my first word of the day. 
then that word serves as a prediction of how shitty that day is going to be. Naturally, Isabella woke me up asking if I'd rather fuck Grant or Harry. I thought she was supposed to be some kind of feminist who doesn't need a man. Hypocrite. To answer the question, I need to do a bit of research. Harry will suffice for that. What the fuck? What? <laughs> what? There's like ten kinds of strange in this note here. Waking somebody up asking you who, who they, you know, asking you who they, uh, who would you like to fuck is a really weird thing to wake up to. And a really weird reason to wake somebody up. And what the fuck does that have to do with being a feminist? What? And do a bit of research. I, is she saying she, she's gonna sleep with Harry to, what? Okay. I guess I'm obligated to write about the ship lockdown since it's all life-threatening or something. I don't know why we even carry these PDAs. Seriously, I will never ever go back and read this shit. Wow, Shelby just does not care, does she? The Groom Lake got a 300% funding increase and I have a feeling we're doing some more shady bullshit with it. Welcome aboard the Groom Lake, where as far as the universe is concerned, you don't exist. And as far as the board is concerned, you don't exist. Nothing actually exists. Humanity's gonna flip shit when they finally figure that out. So, Grant's gay. I knew I'd seen him checking Harry out. Lips are sealed. It's gonna be a long, painful death if we don't get those rations soon. I might have to start murdering and eating my blockmates. I'll start with Grant, because he's got the most meat on him. Harry is last because I'm in no hurry to put my mouth on that again. Hey, someone's making some booze. Humanity has truly reached the apex of engineering. Space moonshine. Brings a smile to my eye and a tear to my heart. Get me some. Taste, 0 out of 10. Effectiveness, 10 out of 10. This stuff has to be at least 120 proof. Had to do something I totally don't regret to get it, and it was worth it. Liquor supply is running low. Food supply is high. I'm disappointed. Here I was thinking I'd be enjoying moonshine marinated leg of Grant this evening. Disappointing. At least I didn't starve. On the one hand, something exciting happened. On the other hand, we're probably going to die or something. I have no regrets. Not even that thing I did to get the moonshine. I've been thinking about it over the last couple of days. I sincerely can't think of anything I regret. Not hooking up with Harry. Not pursuing music instead of physics. Nothing. It was all part of what made my life mine. Life carries on, no matter what. So I guess it's best to just be satisfied with what little I did accomplish. The universe swallows you atom by atom eventually. You know, I'm proud of how far those atoms made it from when they first got together to form Shelby Isaacson to where they are now. You know, there's kind of an uncomfortable tone that's come out of especially these last two PDA entries. Like, I feel like the entries are focusing uncomfortably and strangely on women sleeping with people to an uncomfortable degree. I mean, first being woken up asking who do you want to fuck and then trying out Harry and sleeping with someone for the moonshine and then and then there's the whole thing about the security footage of what was her name Miriam screwing everybody from the lab or something like that like uh, uh. I don't really like that they're focusing on that as much as they are in the writing and the PDA entries and stuff like that. Kinda gross.
Mother had a run that was covered Hello? in fat. Father had a tongue that was also black. Is anyone there? They didn't care for us. We didn't care for them. And so Where the hell is that voice coming from? Again and again. Skin like a crocodile and eyes like sin. The RG consumed them from within. Is this the first time I've seen insects before on board this ship? I think it might be. Hmm. Huh. Would insects even really... Wow, I just realized something. Would insects even really be aboard ships? Like, I'm sure you'd have, you know, the odd straight one, but would you have, like, populations of insects actually surviving? Would you have mosquitoes? Would you have flies? Would there be bugs in hydroponics? Because bugs are really important to plants. I have no idea. Hmm. I'm having an existential crisis as to whether bugs would actually exist on board ships. They probably would. Like insignificant populations? Sustained over time? I think they would. Some types of bugs, anyway. <laughs> anyway, okay, I got lost in thoughts about bugs. Uh, I think I should probably end this episode here before it becomes way too long. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.